Long ago in the river port city called Novgorod the Great, there lived a young musician named Sadko. Every day, a rich merchant or noble would send a messenger to Sadko's door, calling him to play at a feast. Sadko would grab his 12-string goosely and rush to the banquet hall. There, he'd pluck the strings of his instrument till all the guests were dancing. Eat your fill. The host would tell them later, pointing to the table and passing him a few small coin besides. And on such as he was given did Sadko live. Often his friends would ask him, How can you survive on so little? It's not so bad, Sadko would reply. And anyway, how many men can go to a different feast each day, play the music they love, and watch it set a whole room dancing? Okay. Sadko was proud of his city, the richest and most free in all Russia. He would walk through the busy market square, lined with merchants in their stalls and teeming with traders from many lands. He never crossed the square without hearing tongues of far-off places from Italy to Norway to Persia. Down at the piers, he would see the sailing ships with their cargoes of lumber, grain, hides, pottery, spices, and precious metals. And crossing the great bridge over the river Volkov, Sadko would catch the glint from the gilded roofs of a dozen white stone churches. Is there another such city as Novgorod in all of the world? Is there any better place to be? Yet sometimes Sadko was lonely. The maidens who danced gaily to his music at the feast would often smile at him, and more than one had, had, had set his heart on fire. But they were rich, and he was poor, and not one of them would think of being his. <laughs> one lonely evening, Sadko walked sadly beyond the city walls and down along the broad river Volkov. He came to his favorite spot on the bank and set his goosely on his lap. Wait. Gentle waves brushed the shore, and moonlight shimmered on the water. My lovely river Volkov. Rich man, poor man, it's all the same to you. If only you were a woman, I'd marry you and live with you here in the city I love. Sedko plucked a sad tune, then a peaceful one, then a merry one. The tinkling notes of his ghostly floated over the Volkov. All at once the river grew rough and strong. Waves began to slap the bank. Heaven help me! cried Sadko as a large shape rose from the water. Before him stood a huge man with a pearl encrusted crown atop a flowing mane of seaweed. Musician, behold the king of the sea. To this river I have come to visit one of my daughters, the princess Volkova. Your sweet music reached us on the river bottom where it pleased us greatly. <laughs> Thank you, your majesty. Soon I will return to my own palace. I wish you to play there at a feast. Gladly, but where is it, and how do I get there? Why, well, under the sea, of course. I'm sure you'll find your way, but meanwhile, you need no wait for your reward. Something large jumped from the river and flopped at Sadko's feet. A fish with golden scales. As Sadko watched in amazement, it stiffened and turned into solid gold. It's Your Majesty, you are too generous. <laughs> Say no more about it. Music is worth far more than gold. If the world were fair, you'd have your fill of riches. And with a splash, he sank in the river and was gone. The next morning, Sadko arrived at the market square just as the stalls were opening. He quickly sold the golden fish to an astonished merchant. Then, hurrying to the piers, he booked his passage on a ship leaving Novgorod that very day. Down the Volkov, the ship sailed across Lake Lagoda in the Gulf of Finland and into the Baltic Sea. As it sped above the deep water, Sadko peered over the rail. In all the wide sea, how can I ever find the palace? Just then, the ship shuddered to a halt. The wind filled the sails, yet the ship stood still as if a giant hand had grasped it. The captain cried out to his crew, It must be the king of the sea! Perhaps he seeks tribute or someone among us. 
Do not be troubled. I know the one he seeks. And clutching his goosely, he jumped from the ship. Down sank Sadko, down all the way to the sea floor. The red sun shone dimly through the water above, while before him stood a white stone palace. Sadko passed through the coral gate. As he reached the huge palace doors, they swung open to reveal a giant hall. The elegant room was filled with guests and royal attendants. Herring sprats, cod and flounder, gobies and sticklebacks, sand eels and sea scorpions, crabs and lobsters, starfish and squid, sea turtles and giant sturgeon. Standing among the guests were dozens of maidens, with the nymphs, the sea king's daughter. On a shelf thrown at the end of the hall sat the sea king and his sea queen. You're just in time. Musician, come sit by me and let the dance begin. Sadko set his ghostly on his lap and plucked a merry tune. Soon, all the fish swam in graceful figures. The seafloor crawlers comforted. The river maidens leaped and spun. I like that tune. The king jumped to the center of the hall and joined the dance. His arms waved, his ropes whirled, his hair streamed, his feet stamped. Faster! Play faster! Sadko played faster, and the king's dance grew wilder, and all the others stopped while watching in awe. Ever more madly did he move. Whirling faster, leaping higher, stamping harder. The sea queen whispered urgently, Musi Musician, end your tune. It seems to you the king merely dances in this hall. But up above us, the sea is tossing ships like toys, and giant waves are breaking on the shore. Alarmed, Sadko pulled a string till it snapped. Your majesty, my goosely is broken. A shame, said the sea king, winding to a stop. I could have danced for days, but a fine fellow you are, Psycho. I think I'll marry you to one of my daughters and keep you here forever. <clears throat> your Majesty, beneath the sea, your word is law, but this is not my home. I love my city of Novgorod. Say no more about it. Now, behold your bride, the Princess Volkova. The Princess stepped forward. Her green eyes were sparkling, and a soft smile graced her lips. Dearest, Sadko, at last we could be together. For years I have thrilled to your music. You've played on the shore. <gasps> Volkova, you're as lovely as your river. But the sea queen leaned over and said softly, You are a good man, Sadko, so I will tell you the truth. If you but once kiss or embrace her, you can never return to your city again. That night, Sadko lay beside his bride on a bed of seaweed. He longed to hold her, but time after time, the sea queen's word came back to him. Never return to your city again. And his arms stayed frozen at his sides. Dearest, why don't you embrace me? Um, uh, it is the custom of my city. We never kiss or embrace on the first night. Then I fear you never will. And she turned away. When Sadko awoke the next morning, he felt sunlight on his face. He opened his eyes and saw beside him not the Princess Volkova, but the River Volkov, and behind him rose the walls of Novgorod. My home, said Sadko, and he wept, perhaps for joy at his return, perhaps for sadness at his loss, perhaps for both. The years were good to Sadko. With the money that remained to him, he bought a ship and goods to fill it. And so Sadko became a merchant, and in time, the richest man in Novgorod. What's more, he married a fine young woman and raised a family. Yet sometimes still on a quiet evening, he would walk out of the city alone, sit on the bank, and send his tinkling music over the water. And sometimes, too, a lovely head would rise from the river to listen. Or perhaps it was only moonlight of the Volkov.